the USA is the largest oil producing country in the world. In our session today, playing the USA Canada 4K scenario, we will transport oil from oil producers to an oil refinery. Oil is produced by two types of primary industries in OpenTDD. First, onshore oil wells, producing oil on land, and second, offshore oil rigs, which are constructed on water. Oil wells have the disadvantage that they start to disappear from the year 1950 onwards. New oil wells will not spawn after 1950 and existing oil wells will operate until they run dry. Eventually, oil wells disappear from the map. On the contrary, oil rigs start to appear on water from the year 1960 onwards. Obviously, being on water, oil from oil rigs must be picked up via ships. Though ships have an extraordinary high cargo capacity, they are very slow. Transporting long distances from oil rigs to the next oil refinery via ships can take a very long time. Income from transporting oil over water is rather low and it is challenging to keep ships alone profitable. We will improve the transport time and payments from transporting oil by shortening the transport time of ships as much as possible. We will build docks at the nearest coastline and pick up the oil at the docks via trains. Trains are much faster and can carry also significantly amounts of cargo. Using a hierarchical railway network with the main line and side lines, we will still will be able to earn income from oil transport by transferring oil from ships to trains and transporting it a longer distance to a far away oil refinery. We will also engage into aviation, meaning passenger transport via airplanes. The three largest airlines on the world by passengers are situated in the USA. American Airlines is the largest airline worldwide. In OpenTDD, airplanes are good for initial money making when starting a new game. In contrast to using trains for initial money making, what we did, airplanes are easier to initially set up. Their infrastructure, which are only airports, is easy and quick to be set up. Airplanes travel very fast and therefore effectively carry passengers and mail to generate a significant income. Let's do a brief recap from our last sessions in the USA Canada 4K scenario. We started money making in the first session with a simple railway network connecting industries close to each other. The initial income from the first railway network could be fund our second, the hierarchical railway network for long distance coal transport, including a main line and side lines. In our session today, we will add aircrafts and in addition not only transport coal but also oil in a hierarchical railway network. To maximize income from primary industries like coal mines and oil rigs, we will try to grow their production. We aim to increase the station rating due to two reasons. Firstly, more produced cargo will be loaded onto our vehicles. Secondly, production can be increased. With this approach to increase production and retrieve a higher share of produced cargo, we can use the existing infrastructure even better and transport more produced cargo as well as generate a higher income. The probability of a primary industry to grow its production increases with an at least good station rating, which means at least 60%. The station rating also directly translates into the amount of cargo which can be transported from the industry. There are many factors improving the station rating, which you can find in the OpenTDD game manual. Some factors are easy to improve, others are quite fixed once the infrastructure and vehicles are selected. It always makes sense to assure that there is at any time at least one vehicle waiting to pick up cargo at a primary industry. Also, building a statue in the town of the station is an easy measure to increase the station rating if you have the necessary capital aircraft, coal-fired power plants, using petroleum from oil refineries, all those items have an environmental impact in our real life. Apparently, aircraft, coal-fired power plants and petroleum-based combustion engines of automobiles are powered by burning of fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels emits carbon dioxide. 
Scientists say that burning fossil fuels is a major contributor to climate change and global warming. I believe this is not good news. The climate change impacts us as human beings and can cause health, health risks. Extreme heat from global warming could make us sick and even reduce our life expectancy. Taking a plane for a long distance travel is a convenient and very fast way of traveling. At the same time, flying by plane is from purely energy efficiency perspective a rather inefficient way of traveling compared to other means of transport. Aviation alone is assumed to account for 2.5% of all carbon dioxide emissions on the world. Airplanes consume around 1.4 megajoule of energy per passenger and kilometer. Also, automobiles are comparable inefficient. 99.5% of the consumed energy by driving is used for moving the car itself and only 0.5% is used for moving the passenger in total. Even a small car with a combustion engine consumes 1.1 megajoule per passenger and kilometer. Switching to a battery electric vehicle reduces the value to 0.5 megajoule per passenger and kilometer. Also, switching to transport via trains significantly decreases the energy consumption and hence increases the energy efficiency. Trains are very efficient means of transport. Trains only consume 0.5 two megajoule per passenger and kilometer, which is many times less than traveling by airplane. Higher energy efficiency usually reduces burning of fossil fuels, emission of carbon dioxide, and therefore the growing impact of global warming. I believe climate change, global warming and extreme heat might have an impact on our quality of life in the future. Depending on our location, it can make our life cumbersome and shorter than needed. Having this in mind, I let you decide to always double check to choose the more energy efficient means of transport if possible. And now let's start the game. Here we are in the main menu of OpenTTT version 14.1. We will load the game and we will load the last session, part two. Obviously, as said, we are in the USA, Canada, okay scenario. You see here the North American map and um, we built already the initial railway network for initial money making here in Canada in the Edmonton Calgary area. And um, secondly, in our second session, it's our second part, um, from this scenario, we already started to build an hierarchical network with a main line and side lines to transport coal from coal mines to one coal-fired power plant over longer distances to even increase our income of our transport corporation. Let's first have a look and have a short recap on initial money making. We built it using trains and we connected industries close by. This is cost saving as we don't need so much money to invest into the infrastructure. At the same time, as you can see, this is not a very efficient network. All trains, no matter if they want to stop here at the train stations or here, need to pass through the train station. Also, if a train wants to just simply skip the station and go to a place or location um, far away. And that's why in this railway network, we will see from time to time congestions traffic jams, so to say. And um, there are some bottlenecks here. I think one is around here. Those two industries, which are supplied by this train station, also pick up by this train station. And um, we see already now, I think here, a traffic jam, a jam of trains waiting here in queue for those four trains, which are currently blocking this train station. And what we see is actually, this will not resolve by itself. We need to intervene here. All those four trains are blocking all the four ways through the station at the same time waiting to pick up food. However, food will not be produced as long as not wheat, livestock and fruit will be delivered to the train station, which is obviously not possible at the moment to resolve this. And to avoid that this happens again, we could extend the network now and optimize a little bit, but we will take the time for other items and activities. So for now, we will do a simple, simple trick. We will simply order one train 
to move to the next depot and then sell it. Yeah? Therefore, only three will be in the future waiting at any time. So one train at least can pass by and this should hopefully resolve the problem for this future. This is the network for initial money making, connecting Calgary with, I think here, Edmonton and several industries. This supplies still some money, but we will see from time to time messages that the trains are not operating profitable. And that's why we also invested into our hierarchical network. And this is in a different location. Let's uh, find it on the map. It's here, south of Chicago. And here in this network, you see that it's structured the following. There's one main line going here from the top left corner to the bottom left corner. And um, there are multiple side lines connected to this main line. There are two side lines, which each have three coal fired power plants connected and trains picking up the um, coal from the coal fired power plants will go the side line and stop here at the um, primary industry at the coal mine and then through the sideline travel back to the main line where the main line connects everything together it's the backbone of our network and the end will um, allow the train to travel to the coal fired power plant here where trains are all trains are um, offloading their cargo to convert it into income for the transportation what you see here is that this Sideline is actually not a sideline, it's a main station line, which is treated the same way as a main line. Main lines always have bridges doubled. Yeah? Our main line crosses two rivers, and we see that for each river we have two bridges per left and right track. The reason is that on bridges we cannot place any signals. So there's a signaling gap, and signaling gaps means that uh, trains need to. Um, have longer spaces in between as we have very short spacing on the track itself. We here build two bridges so that um, trains can choose um, one of the bridges if the other is already taken by another train. So we will minimize this impact by the signaling gap. And it's very important to note that um, it needs to be balanced. This means that either way, yeah, the train will have the same distance to travel. Yeah, that's why it looks a little bit different here than, for example, for depots. Depots are only connected to the main line. The reason is that we don't want trains to go into sidelines just to reach a depot. Yeah, trains should just enter a sideline if it's really the target destination to pick up from a primary industry. And this is what we built so far. And um, just as an outlook, what we will do in our session today, um, we will um, extend this a little bit further to the southeast because there are more coal mines which can be connected. I will show you this in a minute. We will also build um, airports, one in New York here and another one in Detroit and connect via airplanes um, to see how airplanes can earn money with quickly setting up the infrastructure and buying airplanes. And we will also, and this we will do here in the Taos, um, in Florida, for instance, we will build a second network for transporting oil from oil rigs offshore to an oil refinery in Florida. And this um, we will do as last step. And probably if we have time and if we are still motivated, we can also build a station to pick up the goods from the refinery and, for example, transport it to Miami here in the south of Florida. But for now, let's start um, with um, extending our network here. Um, as you can see, let's first check in most of the train stations, which are, which are built to um, connect to the coal mines, we see that the train is waiting like here. And also I think here, train is waiting. Exactly another one's approaching, but here's one, I just spotted it here, which has no train waiting. And this is actually not so good for the station rating as um, coal will be piling up in the train station, but no train is picking it up. This will hurt the rating of this um, train station and therefore the probability that the production of this um, coal mine grows is lower than it could be. So that's why we will now instruct, set up another train to go to this train station and help picking it up. 
we will clone the train with shared orders. Yeah, as you can see here, those are shared orders. So whenever one of those trains will share the orders, will we have a change in the orders, all of the trains will also have the same change. And this way we let it go. That goes and will this fill this gap now. And before we continue, we will check also our second sideline, which connects three more coal mines, whether there are trains waiting. There's one train here waiting. Another one here, this is fine. And down here, also one waiting to get loaded with coal. Yeah, that's fine. And also we see here, the trains are going to this train station. And I see we can a little bit optimize. To put another signal here, so the trains do not wait so long. Yeah, more traffic is expected. And now let's look for another potential sideline, which connects multiple coal mines to the main line so that we can generate more income. A very helpful tool is actually the map to use for this. Let's zoom out a little bit and then only pick to show the coal mines. And as you can see, there are some coal mines here, which could be connected to, and there are four in a row here, which can be connected to this main line if we extend it further down and more if we want to even further extend. I think for now, let's check those two and the four, yeah, whether it's worth connecting to them. We will check their production rates and pick those which have a higher production. So this is the two which we might connect via one sideline. This one has 45 tons of coal production rate and this one 108 which is already good 108 is good and then we find the four in a row here this one has 192 tons of coal which is very high and this is i think what we will choose to connect there are the other 390 here 40 here not so much and one here which has 72. Definitely, we want to connect to this one. This will provide a lot of coal for us to transport to the coal mine. The distance will be also a little bit longer and this means more income as the income is determined by the payment rate and additionally, of course, by the distance traveled. This means we need to build a main line to connect here, arrive here. Yeah, and then from here, we will build the sideline. And therefore we need to, I think, a little bit adjust the main, main line. We will now go south. extend a little bit like this and let's see if this works already I think a little bit more tiles can help we'll do this okay here we see a little slope and we will go below that so that our trains do not have to go up. Yeah, this works. And then now we will approach the river, which we need to cross before we will come to the section where we'll build the sideline. extend a little bit and here here will be the crossing happen and we need to double bridges that's why we will build now four yes let's do some landscaping before we build the bridges. 
like this. We need space, uh, maybe even a little bit more. And also here. Let's lower the level. Now continue to build the bridges over the river. Four, two per left. And right track. Now merge back to one track per side. This is actually, as you can see, an L two spaces R mainline yeah it's a very small mainline um, usually for higher traffic expected you would build two tracks per site but to um, reduce complexity we decided to only and be faster in building up our network we decided to only Take this very simple one. And also here, please note that um, we will do it in a symmetric way, in a balanced way. We will merge in a balanced way and split in a balanced way so that no matter which um, side, which bridge the train chooses, it will always travel the same distance. The reason is that uh, for this diagonal part, the train will travel a little bit longer than just going straight and um, no matter which side it will want to take the diagonal part so everything will be kept in sync. Then let's get back to the original spacing of our main line and connect everything. Good, okay, and then continue like here. Does it work? Yes, it works. Extend a bit further that we have enough space to connect our sideline through a sideline hub to the main line. Before we do this, we will take care of signaling. this and then we will have signals with spacing two. This is very dense signaling so that there's not a lot of space between the trains. Uh, here there's a gap, I don't know why. It's always a good cross check, yeah, whether signaling reaches the connecting segment. whether there's a gap, yeah, and friends will not pass it. Okay, this track looks good. Okay, that's it. So now let's connect this coal mine. We'll choose this layout. So trains will enter the train station from here, move into, stop to get loaded. And then exit over here. And travel back. To the main line. Yeah. Is this enough space? To be sure, let's extend a little bit further, so like this. And this means that we will build our sideline hub here now, like 
this. We build it in a way that the, from the sideline, the train can travel in either direction. Space needed. And again, as the main line will cross the side line, we need to double the bridges. Actually, this is not completely correct as we want to have it again balanced. We will change it a little bit like this. And go back to the original spacing. Yes. And then we need to again cross. This time we will only build one bridge on the sideline as the sideline does not need double to double the bridges as um, sidelines you really do not have such often high amount of traffic. We'll connect like this. Now two more connections missing. So that really each side of the track is connected. to have more space here. Like this. And also here. We need to split. And connect now we will ensure via signaling that everything works as we want it to work. Connected. Yeah, this looks good. And now add some more signals in between.
this. Now it's following here, entering the main the train station, departing in this direction, and then returning back to the main line. Yeah, this works. And now what we also will do is um, build depots not far away from here. Maybe here. So that we can set up trains to supply our sideline and also that trains can go to service. This one is not symmetrical. Let's correct this. Now again, add signals to let no train collide. Let's see if it works when the tr first train enters this section and tries to load coal and later on, of course, unload at the coal fired power plant. Okay, this seems to be fine. Let's double check. Yeah, let's go so far. So let's set up our first train. So first of all, let's check coal and sort by maximum speed. We will pick this vehicle to load coal. It goes 128 kilometers per hour, which is exactly what our tracks take. And then let's also pick an engine which suits this purpose. This one is overpowered. This seems fine. Yeah, this is good. Let's buy this one. And then refit to transport coal and set up the schedule. So it will first go to the mine, then from there here to the power plant. That's it. Fully load. Unload. And let's observe if this works. And pause the game. Observing the train the first time, we will now just closely watch it and see whether it really works and everything goes as, as intended and it seems to work well, at least for this way, in this direction. Very good. So now we have connected this um, coal mine, which we hope produce actually with a rate of 216 tons. Very good. So trains will get loaded very quickly, as you can see this already. Meanwhile, while we have an eye on this, we will also connect, of course, the second one. 
in a similar manner. We will connect here, split here, actually, split here, and then connect like this. So a train approaching this coal mine will come from here, enter the train station in this way, then leave here. And we will connect here. So again, let's remove the signals so that we have enough space. While the new train already is fully loaded. And as there's only this one train, we will now set up a second one by cloning it to also pick up what is produced by this coal mine. Yeah, so that there's no coal piling up and the station rating is increasing and improving. Okay, meanwhile, we will add signaling. also here where that, where it merges and here where it splits. No. Yeah, looks good. Okay. So we can actually set up a ne the next one. Okay, also this is already loaded. So we can clone it. And send to pick up more coal. And let's buy a new one. Pick again the one, this one, which seems to be fast enough and uh, has enough power to pull all of the coal when fully loaded. Refit to coal and order it to go here for loading then all the way over the main line to the power plant. Okay, good. Now the next one is already in service. Now we will, we, from initial money making, network, we ordered one train to actually go to a depot, we will sell it. And again, we need to copy one, the production rate is so high that we will need a lot of trains to pick up all the produce coal, which is actually good. So we can efficiently make use of our network which, and infrastructure, which we built so far. Also this one. Yeah, it's now approaching first time. Um, train is arriving and picking up coal. 
And as we remember, we also have a third coal mine here, so we will exactly do the same again. And also connect this one to our sideline, which connects it to the main line. Move signals here so we have enough space to connect. This way as before. Also from here we we'll do the same. This is a split. So trains will go this direction, follow the tracks to enter the main station here. And this should already work. We will test it. So again, this is empty. No train there. Need to clone once again and send one train off. And also we will set up again A new train to service the newly connected coal mine, which is this one. Let's give the orders. As we can see, there's already more traffic now here. Fully load, unload all, and go ahead. Okay, this works. Oh, let's get back here and see whether everything is working as expected. Again, is a train missing? To pick up produced coal. So let's set up another one. And as we remember, we could connect, I think, four. Four mines, but it seems not sure if the one disappeared now. No, here it is. This one we can still connect to our sideline, so let's do so. This is for acceleration and braking. We will always have some tracks extending the platform. On either side. And it's a good advice to pick the length of the train length, which is fixed. We set it to We defined it to be four in our case. Some prefer three, others prefer five.
we need to connect to the sideline. This time this is a little bit more sophisticated. But fortunately we have in this scenario a huge map with a lot of space. Therefore, there's no issue. So we can build it like this. Now let's add signaling. This is where the splits here it merges. And also the train station needs some signals. Check every, if everything is connected correctly. This looks good. And then it goes back to the sideline here. Yeah, that matters back. All fine. All right. So here's one train waiting to get loaded. Here's no train waiting to get loaded. Here are two trains, which is good. So let's clone this one to help pick up what is already being produced by this mine. 188 tons of coal already waiting to get picked up. And we will now set up one more train. Refit to transport coal and give the instructions to first go here and pick up coal and transport it all the way up to our receiving train station. Like this. I think this one is now served very well. Let's check the rating. It's excellent. To even improve the rating, we can build in Louisville here under the local authority, build a statue of the company owner. I find it quite expensive with almost 600K in this case, but we will do so to even further improve the station rating. This one belongs to Louisville and those to Bowling Green, turn to Nashville. Let's also set up one here in Bowling Green for the almost same price so that station rating, rating is improved and boosted. Let's see whether this departs before the other arrives. If it's it's not even going here. Yeah. So we need to clone this one. This is served the first time now. Let's also check the other sidelines if we are still working efficiently here. There's one waiting, another one waiting. Also one waiting. This looks good. Here's one waiting. One waiting here and down here. Oh, this was not perfect. Let's bring one more into play so that 
really ensure that there's always a train waiting here. Great. Okay, this way we extend it by a fair, quite a distance. We extended our main line transporting coal to the coal fired power plant and serve now four more coal mines. And as we see here, again, no train waiting, which we definitely want to avoid. So we will set up just a new one. And we have now already seven serving, serving the station. Maybe there will be eight in the end. Let's see and observe. Those are still fine. And here for this one, we definitely need to clone this one. Let's do this. No, this was wrong. with shared orders, please, and go. There seems to be an issue here. Oh, there's a long, long queue, trains waiting. Somehow this train is blocking. Let's instruct one train to leave the station to make space so that other trains can pass by. This will happen from time to time again and again. And this actually hurts um, the profitability and the income of our network very much as running costs, of course, continue. Trains are on the tracks and operating, but waiting and doing nothing. And meanwhile, service doubles are exceeded and trains start to crash. Breakdown a lot of times. Okay, so we will see and experience the inefficiency of this network quite for a couple of more times, I guess. Um, whereas in our hierarchical network, we will try to avoid this as much as possible. Okay, let's leave it for now. We also said and wanted to set up airplanes. Airplanes actually are more better and useful, usually used for initial money making. As we um, already passed this phase of our game, but still we want to see how it works. We will now add two airports and connect New York City to Detroit. This should be a distance which the planes which we have available in 1965 can tackle set up an airport. We will not select a small one. We will select a large one so that we can also operate it with large airplanes. Yeah, this is what should be good. Yeah, we connect the roads. Fine. This is all we need for the destination, New York City. And then we will set up another one. Detroit, let's search this is Toronto. So Detroit is here. And we will also set one here. Also a city airport. Yeah, this works. Okay, two airports now. And the only thing we are missing is airplanes. So we will now select one and buy one. Now we need to exactly, yeah, click on this building on top of the airfield. And we will pick up passengers from New York, travel them, let them travel to Detroit and vice versa. And let's pick one plane with the maximum capacity, either the Boeing 707. Or 
the two class DC8. Oh, we will check, take the Boeing. We will give it orders to first pick up passengers in New York City and then travel all the way to Detroit. Fully load at any. And let's see how it works. So now loading passengers being available here in the airport. Now it's loading quite decently. And um, why have we picked New York City and Detroit? Here's a function in the town directory. We can always check by population, which are those which the with the highest um, population in New York and Detroit. New York is this with the largest population, of course, and Detroit is also among the top five cities. So connecting those definitely makes sense as we expect at the airports a decent good supply of passengers so that airplanes do not have to wait long to um, have any passengers to board the plane. And if we think that this even does not goes quick enough, we can add and feed a line. No. With a bus service, some kind of airport bus service, and it will pick up passengers from New York City. We will buy this one. And give orders to first, where is it? Go to New York West, then to the airport and to service. Fully load. Transfer, this is very important that they are transferred and not just offboarding the vehicle and then disappear. Transfer to the plane waiting and go to service if needed afterwards. And we will do this two times with two buses for the same station. Meanwhile, passengers will enter the airport and wait for the next plane to arrive. Therefore, we will clone this aircraft to do exactly the same again. Meanwhile, let's check here whether we still operate efficiently. Yeah, this works. So this is, this aircraft is fully loaded with passengers and mail. And now let's observe how it goes to Detroit. This is actually very quick. Still taking taking a short while now arriving in Detroit, taking down, breaking. Move into boarding position. All passengers will leave the airplane, 100K, more than 100K income. And then as there's enough passenger supply here, we don't need a feeder line and we will simply leave it as it is. And we will put two more 
aircrafts in service to generate even a higher income from both airports. Okay, very well, this works. So our next activity will be around transporting oil, which is a little bit more complex. We will not transport oil from oil wells as oil wells, wells will and eventually disappear from the map. Yeah, will, they will dry, run dry and then will disappear and no new oil wells now in 1966 will appear on the map. And um, therefore, we will directly, as they are already available, we will directly set up ships to pick up oil from oil rigs offshore on water, transport it to the coast, and from there, if needed, via train to an oil refinery. And um, we will do this here in this area, the Gulf of Mexico. Why? because if we look into the terrain, it's quite flat. So it's easy for us to set up here trains and docks and um, ships and so on. Whereas at the other coastlines, there's not so much space. Um, it's a little bit more effort to set up the infrastructure. And as we want to have a quick win here, we will first do this where it is easy to set up. Let's move here. And as we see here, for example, in St. Petersburg, yeah, there are three oil rigs, which can be serviced by a ship. And the ship can actually directly offload the oil to this refinery, yeah, which is very close in this case. And this is what we will do for first step yeah, to just see how it works. Before we do this, we will do a little bit of landscaping so that we even better even better reach the refinery let's see how it this space now fills up with seawater And now we will set up docks here, just three. So that if in case all three ships which will approach those oil rigs come back and serve the refinery and offload their cargo, um, there's no queue. Yeah. And then also, of course, we need a depot. We'll put it here and set up already now ships transporting oil from the oil rig to the refinery. And we will pick this freighter, which is a large coaster, has high energy costs, but not so high running costs. And we will buy three as we have three oil rigs here, one per oil rig. First, let's refit to oil each one. And then one by one, give the right orders. Put on this, then to the docks, and then into service if needed. Fully load, unload all. Maintain if needed. The same, but different target. Fully load, unload, maintain if needed. Yeah. 
Wir denn das waren. And as we will see, this will be very, very slow. Definitely not, does not make sense in the first phase of the game. Yeah, as it takes a while until the ships actually will earn money. Now they are traveling here with very slow pace to the three oil platforms and start to load oil. Then return back. Afterwards, usually go to maintenance as a lot of time has been passed and return back to the oil rig to pick up all the other oil which is produced there. And um, if we have a look, a closer look yeah, at the oil rigs, we see here that there are helipads. Each oil rig has a helipad and accepts passengers and supplies passengers. So what we can do is we can set up just because it's fun. Yeah, actually it's not very profitable, but we will do this because it's fun. We will set up a helicopter service yeah, to each oil rig to pick up passengers and fly them to Tampa. This does not really help to earn money. Usually it's still profitable. This looks good. New aircraft, and this time we will pick a helicopter. This one, which can transport at least 28 passengers, not much, yeah, if we compare to the Boeing 707, which can transport 147. Uh, our helicopter only 28. However, um, of course, oil platform will not provide so much so many passengers. We'll again, set up three of them. First of all, go to always fully load. Also, this one should fully load. No, oh, so. And this one, do the same. Fully load, fully load and return back. And now we see how the helicopter approaches the oil rig, lands on the helipad, and now waits for passengers to board the helicopter. This takes a while as um, oil rigs do not produce so many passengers as it's only the workers, right? However, um, still helicopters can operate in a profitable way, not much, but small income, and I think it looks nice. Meanwhile, ships are loading oil, which takes a lot of long time because um, those ships have a very high capacity. All oil rigs belong to St. Petersburg and to boost a little bit the station rating, we will now at St. Petersburg again under the local authority build a statue so that the station rating is higher. This way we connected oil rigs directly with um, an oil refinery just going over water. However, as said in the introduction, this generates income, but it's difficult to generate profitable, sustainable income. Therefore, we will also do something else. We will add here a train station. And uh, this train station will be connected via a main station line to a main line, which will go into another direction and connect other oil rigs, yeah, which are served by a ship to a um, dock and pick up oil and transport to this refinery. And let's see whether we can earn more money with this. 
And a good next opportunity is here in Fort Lauderdale. Here is an oil rig very close to the coast, but obviously no refinery here. So that's why we will we will transfer the oil from wire ship to trains. So first of all, let's set up docks. One should be sufficient as we have only one ship which will operate here. Of course, we need depot. And now it's fast. Refit to transport oil. First, load oil then transfer this time and go to maintenance if needed. And meanwhile, we will set up the sideline with a station connected to the docks. We'll set up four platforms. This will be a terminal station. Trains will be waiting in this terminal station to pick up oil, which is from time to time arriving for our ship. There's a um, terminal station design, which I prefer to use, which a little bit, I think we need to do it again. A little bit avoids um, need to upgrade a little bit avoids that trains block each other when entering and departing the terminal train station. Yeah, and we will build a network which is a little bit faster now this time. Yeah, so we will build one with medium speed 177. So it goes a little bit faster. It's more expensive, but I think it makes sense to speed up transporting of oil and later on we might have the opportunity to also transport goods from a refinery and goods. Yeah, goods need to be transported very quickly as goods um, have a very high decreasing, a very decreasing curve when it comes to payment rates, when there's late delivery. So goods need to always be transported fast. This is a tunnel to avoid the trains are blocking each other. Signaling comes later. So now we need to build the main line, which somehow arrives here and connects to the refinery. Let's see how this works. We have here woods being in the way. So let's build the main line here. And this time we will build the main line L for spacing and then R, one, two, three, four, Then we have more space in between and it's easier to build sideline hubs or depots and so on. We will see this later. Let's extend a little bit further in this direction. Also in this direction. 
and then it will here are the dogs needs to go here like this Yeah, this looks good. And I think we can just extend now. This should work already. Yeah, there's temper. Getting closer. Oh, there's not a lot of space here. Uh, we need more space. As this will be a very busy Very busy, very, very busy train station. Probably we should even build it around Lakeland. Like this. More space because um, connecting to the oil refinery will not be a side line. It will be a main station line. Connecting the main station line with the main station hub to the main station line. And this needs a little bit more spacing as we will treat main station lines the same as main lines, such as having double bridges and so on. This now will work, I think. Yeah, that's good. That's first because it's easier. Build the sideline hub. As this is a sideline, we will not double bridges. And we will to prepare for whatever other use case we will connect to each direction, all tracks. And of course, here, this is for the main line and for the main line we will double bridges like this and we will of course again make it balanced return back to the original layout and spacing of the main line Okay, this is one part. Eat. Yeah, this should be fine. And now we will also set up depots nearby. 
And since we have a lot of space between the left hand track and the right handed, we can build the depots actually in the between them. And then the layout looks like this. I find it looks also nice. Now let's start to add signals. Trains will come from this direction. Mm -hmm. so this one's wrong. this is the way to the refinery. Good. Okay. Also, let's now add signaling here. This is where trains can choose in either direction to go back and join the main line. Trains from this direction coming can merge onto the sideline here. This is where it splits. Mm -hmm. Let's fill up the spaces in between. Okay, this is not complete yet. Yeah, this complete. And this is missing. Okay. Looks good. Yeah, looks good. So this is working already. Loaded 50%. Let's complete the layout. And we are still missing the layout here. So this is where we have a main station receiving and producing. Yeah, it's a secondary industry. It receives wired incoming trains oil yeah, from the other oil rig, which is connected by a ship and train. And it will produce goods, yeah, which will be picked up here at the same time. Yeah, so that's why we need two train stations. We will always separate each type of good. Yeah, we will never mix because mixing it will make it inefficient. Yeah? Trains, especially in the, in, in, um, in the case of um, production, yeah? trains will be waiting for quite some a while, yeah? while other trains will arriving, providing the input goods. And therefore, it completely makes sense to separate so that trains will not block each other. So we will have four platforms here on this side for incoming oil and again it's a terminal train station and we will choose the layout which avoids blocking of incoming and outgoing trains to a certain extent at least you have not much space so this will be very busy this will be probably a bottleneck let's see Let's see. We will build the tunnel here. Mm -hmm. 
like this. We should take more space. This will be too tight. And later on we will have an unnecessary bottleneck. We will go a little bit higher. Like this. Because if we still plan to pick up goods here at the oil refinery, we need space, yeah? Because a lot of trains will arrive and depart and we'll need space also for waiting. We need waiting base. Yeah, this is better. And now we have the case this time that um, we need to double bridges. Now we need to plan a little bit. We will have two bridges and then this. Okay, there's an error. Don't know why. It's only spacing three. Now we have the correct spacing, more space yeah, to connect and build the hub. Looks a slightly slightly different. No. Because we need to double bridges at this is a very busy main station line. This makes sense now. Of course, the crossing main line also needs to double bridges. You always pick the bridge with the minimum speed we need. The connection is missing. Good. And also trains will go in this direction. To merge on this line and incoming from this direction. and merge here. Yeah, I think this looks good. Let's now add signals. This was for, for the incoming, this for the outgoing trains. Trains will be coming from here, entering the platforms and going back via this.
the main line will be mainly coming from this direction or passing by or merging. Good. Okay, this let's double check everything is connected and signals up put in the correct way. Okay, good. And then of course here we will also add depots so that trains can go into service. We will again build something in the middle. Like this with depots. This is the wrong one. Like this. And of course, signals needed to avoid the trains go in the wrong direction. Do something which we not intend to do, intend them to do and collide with other trains or cause disruptions in our network. Mm -hmm. From here we will go to the main station hub and back. Well, signaling in this direction. Yeah, looks good. And also the other way. It's always a good check to see whether there is any gap in the lines. No. And finally, now we set up our second hierarchical network with a sideline to a dock, which will receive oil from a nearby oil field. The trains will go the main line all the way to the main station hub and the main station line and delivering oil to the refinery, which already receives oil from oil fields via ship only. Good. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. So we will need to set up trains which will wait here in this train station on four platforms for the oil to arrive and um, let's set up the train it will take this goes with maximum speed 136 so we need also an engine which at least has the speed 136. This is a little bit overpowered, probably. This is not enough. Let's take this one. Hopefully it accelerates a little bit more quickly. Let's take the black, dark tank vehicles. First of all, refit to oil. Then go here and wait. After being fully loaded, go to the refinery and offload. Fully load, unload all. So 
Let's see if it works. Let's observe if the train properly arrives. At least in this direction, if it works, then we will copy it, clone it three more times so that all four platforms are occupied by trains waiting for the oil to arrive. Yeah, this looks good. It goes with maximum speed, 136. Was not possible with this, those vehicles. Yeah, this looks good, right? The ship is getting loaded. Now it's waiting, waiting for the oil. Okay, let's clone this. three times. There's a ship. Now delivering the first time oil to the refinery, which is good, creating some income, not a lot. Let's also check for the helicopters. Yeah, this one is not really generating income. This one prof is profitable. Yeah, let's see. So now we see here that the other trains, the cloned ones are now arriving here and waiting at one train each platform. So now let's go back here to our refinery. This will receive very soon, receive oil and the refinery will, with the help of oil as input, good, it will produce goods. And those goods we actually can make use of, right? We can deliver them, transport them to a city and then generate more income from our infrastructure. And this is exactly what we will plan for now. The ship will arrive very, very soon. We pause the game and let's think of what makes sense. We could, as a quick win, deliver goods to Miami. Yeah, so we can simply set up again a main station here. Terminal train station. This was mistake. Let's do it again. Yep, like this. I hope it accepts goods. No, it does not accept goods. It's too far away, right? So we will need feeder lines into the city. But never mind, we'll do this. First of all, let's set up. Again, we will set up a terminal train station and the design that it, that incoming trains and outgoing trains do not block each other. A lot. Here's a tunnel. Yeah, this works. And now we will connect this terminal train station directly to the main main line. Yeah, we don't expect that anything else will come here. So we will not take the effort and build a hub and then con a main station line and connect it to this terminal train station. We will directly just simply route all trains which have come so far into this terminal train station to deliver goods.
like this. Just wondering, no depots aren't close by. Yeah, so this was an easy task. However, we will need feeder lines later. Never mind. At least for a while. This is for the incoming. Outgoing. Okay, good. So we can deliver goods to Miami. And now we need a second train station here next to the refinery. Which will be the train station to provide pick up goods. It's also a terminal train station. Trains will be waiting here until goods are produced. It looks exactly the same as the one on the other side but has a completely different purpose. Now oh, let's think how we connect it. So trains will come in from here. So let's build bridges. And of course, not to forget that we again need to double all bridges. Trains are coming from here and I expect that trains will be queuing yeah, because um, goods will be produced not continuously yeah, only if oil arrives yeah, and oil arrives if then a large ship comes and loads everything until they refine to the refinery onto the docks or a couple of trains come at the same time from one other dock transporting the contents the coil transported by a ship. So there will be trains queuing here. So we need some kind of space so that trains can queue up before they and wait to get loaded. Yeah. Of course, the way back will be very Very short. You can do it like this. And here, let's have enough space. course, due to the sharp curves, it will not be very fast. Yeah, but it's not not necessary that it's very fast as trains will be queuing up anyway, I expect. But at least we can look make it look a little bit nicer, right? Okay. 
Like this. Yeah, this should be enough. Space. Let's now add six. So here, when they merge back, yeah, this looks good. I think this works. Let's see. Let's test it. Now we will, for now, set up the entrance with vehicles transporting goods. And let's take the ones with the highest speed. Our tracks can go 177 kilometers per hour. So this one, the lightweight mail car, is good. So let's take an engine which 180 is a little bit overpowered, 177. Yeah, let's choose this one. The lightweight mail car. We will be mixing now trains with different stopping patterns and different maximum speed yeah and we will see that this generates some inefficiency as um slower trains are using the same tracks and delay this a little bit however it will still somehow work for us i guess so refit to goods travel here and then go to miami fully load and here in Miami we will transfer as um, this train station does not accept goods and we need to pick it up first and bring it into the city where goods will be accept accepted. So let's see if it works. While the ship is approaching Ah, this ship's is broken down, so it has some delay now. Enough time for our train to take its way to the train station, just being set up to pick up goods, which are produced by the refinery. Let's see if it gets in time. Not really, I guess. We'll be close. Very close. Okay, at least it catched some of the goods. Not much, but some. And so now we will copy this train four times. Two, three. Those three more trains will arrive now. They go a little bit faster than those who transport oil. And go to Miami. So in Miami, the train station does not accept goods. So this means we need a feeder line with trucks. Authority refused it. 
So we need to make them happy. This can be easily done by planting trees. Let's check. Very poor. I think this is enough. Still not enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. More trees needed. Maybe this one now. Now it's poor, this should be enough. Truck stop. And then one in the middle of the city. Probably here. Accepts goods. Okay. You need a depot. Meanwhile, let's quickly check. You see here trains picking up oil from the oil rig here, transit provides ship and they will be now going, hopefully, to the refinery and unloading cargo so that goods are produced and the other trains are transporting produced goods to Miami and this is where we now will set up a bus feeder line Let's take this one. Refit to pick up goods. This does not work here. Refit, pick up goods here, deliver to here, and then go into service if needed. So fully load, unload all, maintain if needed. And this one. If you clone once, and let's see if this is enough. Yeah, this works for now. Three trains waiting to get loaded, doors are open, yeah, with goods. Either from a ship, one is approaching, coming in, or via trains, which are also coming from the south here. I think there's there are trains now coming, or at least one train is coming. Yeah, here trains are coming and bringing oil. Yeah, let's wait a little bit. Also this ship incoming. And I'm sure we will buy more trains to transport goods because a lot of goods will be produced now. And with goods, as we can check here in the cargo payment rates, goods should be, as they are have a very high penalty for later delivery, should be picked up quickly and also brought to the destination as quickly as possible.
check this or again a train somewhere in the traffic jam. What is happening here? Ah, okay. Yeah, the initial money making network is not very good. Needs from time to time intervention. Now the chip is offloading. And meanwhile producing, so trains will be loaded with goods. And now this goes really quick. Already all three waiting trains are gone. You can check that there are more goods which can be transported. Each of the train. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think seven, right? Seven times. Yeah, so two more trains. Go to the depot here and clone two times. Yeah, even more goods are now available. So we will actually let's clone one more. And one more. So we have eight in service. This means four can travel, four can wait. Let's see if this plan works. And now you see already now that there's quite some traffic on this main station line and that's why we doubled bridges. Everywhere we need a bridge so that um, there's a high capacity of this main station line. Still a lot of goods waiting. Two more trains, three more coming in now. Yeah, I think this works better now. Probably we need one more train, but I don't want to buy too many. So after a while they will all queue up here. Let's see. Another 12 still left for those who will not buy another train because it would wait anyway. So let's, let's keep it like this. Also the main line gets more busy. And now we see those unfortunate circumstances that the slower trains transporting oil will slow down our trains transporting goods. But however, we will accept this for now. To avoid this, um, the only option in my view is that um, we create two main lines, one for transporting oil, one for transporting goods. This can be done. Yeah, it's more expensive and it's a little bit more effort, but it's possible. Let's see if those two trucks are capable of picking up all of the goods arriving here.
Again, we have a traffic jam. Yeah. A lot of goods waiting here now. Hmm. No trains nearby to pick it up. So we will buy, let's buy two more. This is by coincidence, I guess. The traffic jam is improving. Okay, let's observe how it works here. More trains coming, picking up goods. trains coming this should be enough let's see it's another issue oh, i think it's resolving now so if we see those messages here down below then usually those messages come from our initial money making network which has some bottlenecks unresolved bottlenecks Yeah, for now, I think we have enough trains in service who pick up goods. Let's check whether we have enough buses in service. Probably we will choose to set up two more to accelerate a little bit. After a while, Miami will grow, hopefully. And um, it will extend in a way that the station will also accept goods and then we don't have this feeder line anymore. Which adds a high share of delay and reduces our profits. We can connect more oil rigs to our main line. There are more opportunities, not far away, I guess. Let's check. Those three are serviced. Here, yeah, there are two more and here's another one. So this is quite a distance. But via train as it's transporting via train is fast enough there will be some decent income earned from it. So in our next session, we can look into extending the mine line here to earn more money with transporting oil to a refinery and then picking up produced goods. What we can also do is in our next session to see, check whether we can further extend 
our hierarchical network to service our coal mines. And it seems like production is now increasing 250. So initially it was below 200. Now we are servicing it. Not perfect, but enough so that production increased. Let's quickly fix it before we close the session. So that all the time a train is waiting here to load coal produced. It's still tight, I think. This one is probably also reaching. Yeah. I think next time we need to check whether this was already enough to add 